Good afternoon, everybody. My uh, Facebook and YouTube friends, as promised, I was doing two interviews today. I am now with uh, the second one, Linda Schrock. And uh, so thank you very much for wanting to hop on here with me. Sure. Are, you are from a Amish community, is that correct? Yes. What community uh, in, what Amish community was that? Uh, Burkholtz, Ohio. Burkholtz, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, how did the Burkholtz Amish community come to be? Can you explain that? Uh, yeah, my dad uh, was born and raised in Middlefield. And when I was 10, he moved to Fredericktown, Ohio. Okay. And we lived there for 18 years. And things weren't going in church the way he wanted them to be. So he decided to moved to Burkholz, Ohio, and make his own community so that he can have his own rulings, how things should be. What is your dad's name? Sam Mullen. Sam Mullen, very well known. I have heard a lot about that man. Uh, usually bad things I've heard about that man. I've been warned about that man. I've uh, heard a lot of stories about him, obviously. So you would say he wanted to go to that community to make it his own. Yes. That's what you're saying control okay. and he wants the rulings his way set it all up the the way sam wants it yes so i have a uh, a friend mickey sitting here also not in the video but you'll be able to hear her uh, i'm gonna allow her to ask the next question so um linda why is sam mullet infamous um I'm not sure what that one was. What, what did he do that put him into the public light? What did Sam do to put uh, him in the he, public light? Yeah, he uh, started punishing people in a way that Amish people don't punish, mm -hmm. like uh, chicken coops and all that kind of stuff. Did, was he involved with the haircutting of the Carrollton Amish, including the Bishop, Bishop Miller? Yes. Okay, a lot of people I have talked to, they know about that story, how the hair cutting, beard cutting, or something like that. Yep. Uh, I think that's actually where most people learn about the uh, the name Sam Mullet uh, because of that incident. Because yes. I believe there was a, up to 16 Amish mm -hmm. members that went to prison. Is that yes. right? Okay. Sure yes. So that, he, that was a story that kind of went national, I think, at that time. Yes. yes. Uh, can you actually, before I, before I have you ask another one, I want to kind of ask you this. What resulted in that beard cutting and hair cutting? Uh, the idea of it was uh, way back in 2005, my sister was married to uh, her husband. And things happened and he separated them. So... Uh, he said the reason that this all happened is because the community, Burkholz community, is not living the life they should live. So mm -hmm. everybody tried, was repenting from sins. And the men in the community said that they cut their hair and beards because they want to start a new life. Okay. So what it led to cutting hair in the other Amish community was that they had, my dad shunned, uh, Wilma's husband and the other Amish communities took him out of the bone. Okay. So he decided to go cut these people's hair that took them out of the bone so they can start a better life too. Really? So they thought they're doing a good thing by yes. doing this? Yes. Yes. At least wow. that's what he told them. That's what he was saying. That's what he told them. How many, how many of the people who were involved in cutting the hair of the Carrollton Amish were actually re blood relatives of yours? None. None were blood relatives of yours? None of the ones, the, the people that they went after to cut hair were not. But the people who actually did the hair cutting, how many of them belonged to the Mullet family in some degree? Oh, all of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. Did, did Sam Mullet actually have authority over Bishop Miller? No. Did he have authority over any of the members that had their hair forcibly cut? No. Who is who was Martha Mullet? She's my mom. How many children did she have by Sam? Eighteen. Eighteen. How many of them are still in the Bergholtz community? Uh, that's a tough question. I'm gonna guess 
seven or eight. Yeah. And when you talked about chicken coops, you mentioned that as a punishment. What was that punishment? What is that punishment that's still going on today? Basically what that was is my dad got everybody to write their sins down on a piece of paper and then he knew what the sin that everybody was caught in and he locked them up so that they can write it down mm -hmm. so you can read it. Lock and them where, up in a chicken coop? They, yeah. Yes. Uh. And, and these chicken coops, are they empty? No. What, it, what else is in the chicken coops with the people who are locked up? Chickens. And are, we actually had a goat in our chicken coop too, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and these aren't clean chicken coops? No, they're not. So if people are living out there in the chicken coops with the chickens, how do they make a bed for themselves? Uh, they had a five gallon bu bucket to sit on and then they had some blankets and a coat. And then what are they eating and drinking while they're out there? Basically bread and water. And how bread they, and water. And then how are they getting the bread and water? Somebody from the house takes it out to them. On a daily basis? On a daily basis. Wow. And they're forcibly locked up against their will? The door is not locked. He just tells them, stay in. Okay. It's, it's locked by the word. Your mom, Martha Mullet, um, before she died, gave an interview to Al Jazeera where she said that she herself put herself in the chicken coop quite a number of times and that she would sit there and repent repent and pray and write letters to people while she was out there and that she did this voluntarily. You told me that she actually did do this. Why did she do that to herself? Because my dad made her feel that she's a very, very bad person and he said that he knows that she cheated on him, although he could he had no evidence or no proof whatsoever, just in his mind. Mm -hmm. He he saw four of us children actually look different than all the rest of them. And those four are the ones that he picked out that mom cheated, although there's no oh, evidence. Wow. What happened to Martha Mullet? She was kicked out of the house and not just her, but all her belongings. And my dad moved another woman in the house. And who was that woman? Uh, Eli Miller's uh, wife, which was his, would be his niece. Does he and have children by that woman? Yes, he, okay. he got her pregnant and had one child. And then where did your mom go? My mom had to live in a, in a trailer in the woods uh, all by herself. And wow. what did the community do to her while she was out there by herself? Uh, she had to do laundry for other people and do all kinds of hard work for her punishment. For her punishment? For punishment. And then how did Martha die? She was doing laundry and she felt her heart hurting and she called the uh, driver and went to Trinity Hospital all by herself. She lived long enough to tell them the number, where to call, and she fell down and died right there. Wow. Kindness is from the devil and that's how we know you're against us. Who teaches that doctrine? My dad. Why does he teach that doctrine? He says that he is God and he is Jesus and his teachings are what we are to listen to. No Bible reading or no questions asked. Just listen to what he says and that will get us to heaven. So he was actually teaching that kindness is from the devil and that's how we know you are against us. Yes. So the kids, if anybody's smiling and kind, he has taught them that that's danger. Yes. Are the Bergholz Amish allowed to read their Bibles? No. Are they allowed to read them in German? No. Are they allowed to read anything in English? No. Why aren't they allowed to read the Bible? He told me as a child that he doesn't want us to read the Bible because we will know the truth and we will find out what it's actually saying and he won't have control over us. Oh, so it's about control. Yes. He knows if you actually read a Bible, 
then you wouldn't want to be under his control because you'd know the truth. Yes. Wow. Are the Bergholtz Amish forbidden to pray to God? Yes. Why are they forbidden to pray to God? We just have to trust that, that he knows what he's doing. So people have to go to Sam to know what God wants for their lives. Yes. Okay. Why do women in the Bergholtz community sleep with and have children by Sam Mullet? He convinced them that if they do that, their bodies will be cleansed and the, the marriage will be better between their own husband and their families will be better after he has done that. Okay. Are you, you're telling me that your dad would tell them that they would their bodies would be cleansed if he had sex with them? Yes. So he would sleep with the other Amish men's wives? Yes. Why do husbands in the Bergholtz community allow and even order their wives to be sexually abused by Sam Mullet? If any of the men would try to stand up against him and tell him that this ain't gonna happen, that that's my wife, it ain't gonna happen, they would be locked up in the chicken coop instantly. So they would get punishment for even yes. saying anything. Yeah, you cannot stand up against him because you're in his way. God told him this is what he has to do, and you will be standing in his way. Linda, I, I heard people tell me that he made the community believe that he was Moses. Some said he was even called Elijah, and that he would tell people that God sent him as a prophet, and they have to listen to him, and that's why they're not allowed to read the Bible. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely right. Why are the girls in the, in the Bergholtz community getting their hair whacked off? Same thing, punishment. If they cry for somebody else than him, um, you don't do that. That's why, why are the girls being punished that way and not the boys? He has, he has uh, his reasons for girls. Girls get harder punished than boys. It's a control. He's Once control over the women? Yeah, More? control over uh, the women. Uh, yeah. be, before you ask the next question, I want to say this real quick. This man, we cannot compare to any other Amish community, and I, and I mean that. I uh, got permission to actually say this. The sheriff's deputy I talked to yesterday no, actually. No, it wasn't the sheriff's deputy. It was the sheriff. The sheriff. Uh, Jefferson County. That I talked to, he said that, Eli, don't never put this. Sam Mullet as a bishop, even in the category of the name Amish, because while Amish are for the most part very good religious people, they, they leave every, everybody else alone if you leave them alone. He said, this man's a monster. Uh, he is very evil. He cannot even be compared to a regular Amish you know, bishop or even the Amish name shouldn't even be tagged onto him because he is a very true cult leader and i just want you to verify that because i don't want I, I get there's a lot of amish communities and i want no one to even think that because this guy what he's doing will actually make other amish look very very bad because he is amish uh, but he's another category so i just want to i want to show the difference because the, he, he's really not even amish he's just a cult leader so go ahead who holds the titles and deeds to all the property that has been bought and paid for by the members of the Bergholtz Amish community? Uh, my dad does. He owns a lot of property, so you can uh, go on his property and build a house, but you have to pay for all the buildings and everything, and then he does not give you the deed for the property, so you can't sell if you want to. So in the case of Eli Miller, and him being forced out. When he left the community last year, he lost his lumber business and had to leave his sawmill. Is that correct? Yes. When he left, he had to leave his house behind and all the belongings in it. Is that correct? Yes, he actually doesn't even have a house. My dad took his house away from him and moved uh, his wife down to dad's house and Eli and his kids and mom were actually living at my house for two years. Knowing the abuse that goes on in this community, why don't more people leave the Bergholtz community the way that you did? 
because they are told that if you go outside of the Burkholz walls and you anything stepping outside, you instantly go to hell. Instantly go to hell. You're going to hell. That's how you he lose, keeps. You lose your salvation. Oh. So the only way to get saved and please God is through him. Yeah. That's what he teaches. Why haven't the authorities done more to stop what's going on in the Burkholz Amish community and the abuse that's been going on there? When I talked to the sheriff, the, he told me that they have done everything they can in the laws of the books of their abilities to do anything. So, What would you like to see happen with that community now as Sam, Sam and Martha's daughter? I want dad locked up. And no communication. I want him to have the same punishment that he gave mom. Uh, locked up and nobody to talk to until he dies. That is my request for him. That's what you would want is for him to yes. be locked up and basically the way he treated your mother. Yes. Until he dies. Yes, that would I would want to do that on my mom's behalf. She yeah. was still my mom. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Uh, I, I see a, a comment here from Barbara Ann. She says, why is this man not in prison? Let's let's explain how your dad actually did, what, eight, about eight years in prison? Yes, he did eight years. Prison. And due to COVID, well, he was released, like, along with many other prisoners. And since his release, uh, I, I researched all this, and I talked to the local law enforcement. He was released after COVID. Uh, when COVID started, actually, in year 2020, like March 2020 or whatever. So it's been about a year and a half, and he's actually 10 times worse than he was before he was arrested. So not only did, you see, he didn't repent in prison after those eight years in prison. He comes out, and I was even told that he was even in power while he's in prison. Yes. Oh, yeah, he does. He used the phone, and he told everybody yeah. what to do and whatnot. The rules were given to the community and his people while he was still in behind bars. Yes. That is how much power and control this man has. So when somebody says, why is he not in prison? Well, he done been there and you can see how broken the system is. And you let some evil cult leader out and all at once now it's even worse than what it was before. I was actually at the sheriff's office three times and literally begged him to lock him back up, but he said he can't. He said he can't do anything. He can't do anything. He done everything he can. So before I ask my ultimate question, in all of this. You went to prison and then you got out and your and your husband told you that he wanted you to do what with Sam. The main reason that I cut my husband off and divorced him was because he told me to sleep with my dad and I refused. What happened to you while you were in prison? Who did you meet there? I meet, met a lot of beautiful, nice women, and they talked to me and prayed for me, and I told them my story. And through them, they actually took a hold of my hand and prayed for me, and I could feel the heat coming through them, and it went into my body and healed the scars. And I instantly knew it was Jesus. Yep. So... I told them that I can't, I don't have anything to give back to them. So I just want to join their group. And that's how I found Jesus. Praise God. And my life has been different ever since. I just got chills and tears on that. But so you got saved in uh, prison. Mm -hmm. So you, cause you, why is that? You got, you finally got to read a Bible and you were allowed to? Well, yes, I read the Bible. Plus I could, I could actually understand what these ladies were saying. Like. Yeah. Their language was so clear and it was so open. And I've been asking and praying God for help ever since we moved down to Burkhold. Right. When I un realized how my dad really is. And I there was no help. But prison, I thought, was going to tear me down. It actually built me up. Yeah. Wow. So now you get saved. Now, when you are you still in contact with any of those women that were in prison with you? Uh, yeah, from the outside woman. Yes, okay. I, I still talk to them, yeah. What uh, what did they charge you with? Um, conspiracy and hate crime. Uh, I was actually... Uh, one of the guys there in the community was living at our house at the time. One of the haircutting 
was involved, he invited him down. So I made dinner for them, even though I didn't cut no hair. I cooked for them and talked to them. And then the second one was when my husband invited his family down and he cut his dad's hair. So I caught, mom was going to run out the door for help. So I caught her and held her so she can't go out. So I was caught with uh, kidnapping. So you were, for that, you were charged for kidnapping? Yes. Pictures were taken of these incidents. Who took the pictures? Eli Miller was one of them. Where do Amish come up with a camera to take pictures of their own crimes? They were not allowed to have them, but Dad told them to go buy one because he wanted to see it. He didn't want to go with to do it because he didn't want to go to prison, but he wanted to see what happened. So he told them to buy a cheap camera from the dollar store so, one so of, he can see right. it. So one of the reasons that the federal government actually had evidence to prosecute the members of your community was because the Amish community actually provided their own evidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Is that right? That's yeah. interesting. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So because he told them to get a cheap camera, took pictures, now they have their own evidence. So when this unfolded, they actually had evidence then. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, why, a they good one. that's why they searched Sam's house was because they were looking for evidence of the crimes. Wow. Another thing I, I am allowed to share that the sheriff did share with me is when he arrested uh, your dad, Sam, he was actually in bed with his own niece when he was arrested. That's Levina. He told me one time when I went up to CCA to visit him, he told me that he knew the sheriff was coming the next day, so he went and put blankets in the closet and went up and told Vina to come down and sleep in the closet because he wanted to show them that it's not true what they're saying. I didn't know that he was actually in bed with them until the sheriff told me. Wow. Now, I've heard from a lot of people about this man uh, since he's been released and how bad it is in the community. Do you, you can say yes or no, or you can even explain it if you want when I ask this question. I was told that there's even possible uh, secret compartments, secret uh, hiding places. There we go, the phone's starting to cut out. Uh, secret compartments and secret hiding places where he's able to hide things. Is that anything to that? I don't know of that myself but I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. So what, what really stands out to you since, as of today when looking back? What, what would you say troubles you the most about what's happening? Like what, what makes it to where nobody wants to touch this guy? If you do something, he will revenge you. Oh, he likes revenge. He loves revenge. He loves to shame people, too. Shame people, make them homeless. If he can make anybody homeless, he would take my home now if he could. He would take your home right now if he could? If he could, he would. But the funny part is uh, we had property out there when I filed for divorce, and they weren't going to give me anything. So I went to court, and I fought for it. And I got it but I'm joint owner, okay. but I do have the deed to it. Okay. And his lawyer actually got me to sign a paper that he cannot touch my house, whether I win or lose. So I was like, I think I'm safe to do this. Yeah. If I have, it made me feel that people knew the situation I was in and that I need help. Who, who lives in the house that you own on that property now? Just me and the three boys are left. And who lives in the community, um, in the house, in the community, with the property that you own jointly? That's just property. It doesn't have a house okay. on it. And who owns Emmanuel's house? Emmanuel owns that house. He's living there with my daughter. And why is your daughter still there? They took her away from me. Uh, she left the Amish as well, and we were everything was going good until my dad found out about it. They went over and 
convinced her to go back before I got home. And then Eli came, your son Eli came back and told you not to interfere. Why? They don't want me to talk to her because they know if I talk to her, she'll come back with me. Mm -hmm. So Lizzie is literally stuck. She's stuck. Wow. I would really like to know how to rescue a lot of these uh, from out under his power and control. I've been we, we need to figure something out, don't we? How many community members are there in, in total, not including the children? I think there are like 17 families. It's been like that for a long time. Hmm. And they all inhabit the valley and the ridge. And you cannot enter that community. You can't go in or out unless you agree 100% with my dad. He oh, really? He doesn't let you go on there to fish or hunt or anything. I might have to make me a trip. Unless... Yeah, there's a really pretty place called George's Lake. It's really nice. Beautiful, open. I know a little uh, Bikers for Christ that would join me right in there. And it's right across from the memorial, so you guys could go out there yeah. and look at the old memor the old war memorial, and sit right there by the lake. Yeah, I'd I'd like to see him come up against some of us that have left the Amish that like righteousness and we hate evil. It'd be great. And yeah, yeah, we have Jesus on our side, and uh, I think he'd have to run. So uh, obviously, this man and what really stands out to me, he is he is the son of perdition, uh, which means he worships uh, a god by the name of Satan. And he does not worship the same God that I do, obviously, because it's about power and control. And to, to hear that he's gotten so much worse after he got out of prison is what's mind boggling to me. A lot of people repent and turn when they're in prison, you know, as long as he was. Um, you got anything else? I mean, what? there's so much you guys went through. Was you at all ever sexually abused under this power and control? He did try it, but like when he come, uh, he would make a round every morning and he would go to all of our houses after the men left for work and he would talk to us and he said that he was coming to get, uh, to ask us how to help with his church. But basically what he was doing is talking about sex and stuff because he wanted you to sleep with him. And he tried it on me, and I refused to talk to him after that. I would not let him come into the house unless my husband was there. And even if my husband was there, I would go into the living room and make him talk to my husband alone. Mm -hmm. I completely cut off communication after I realized what he's after. Yeah. Is Sam Mullet a sex, is, is he a sexual predator? Absolutely. Do you think he's a danger to the children in the community? Absolutely. Um, your brother, Chris, is also a convicted sex offender? He is a sex offender. What did Chris tell you about um, sexual perversion? I talked to him about it one time, uh, and he said that once you start it, it's like a disease. You can't get it out of your head, and you will never stop. What kind of violence does Chris mullet dish out to people in the community he beats them up literally knocks them down on the floor and kicks them down the stairs and wherever he's really really rude and johnny mullet also is one of the people in your family he's your brother he's my brother and if my dad would even want to try to repent or try to say he's sorry about anything johnny would be there to cut him off and wouldn't let him okay so there's a lot of other men under him under his authority that will literally do the same thing he's doing yes wow yeah. that's and is and is johnny in his right mind i hope not i mean i don't think he is is he is he as mean as sam and chris are yeah he beats up he this is why I want help for the, for the community. The last time my children were out on the property that I that I got from the court, they just they were out there having fun. Nothing was going on. They were having a bonfire. Yes, everything was fine until my dad got out of prison. He started. 
uh, chasing men down there to check after them. And the last time they were down there, they beat them up with chains. Were there two English boys there with them too? Yes. And those boys were beaten as well? Yes, they were actually beaten more because they said they're English and they are the devils and they're going to kill them. So Chris was had the one guy, one boy's head and was bumping it against his car to actually try to kill him. He was knocked out a little bit. So for doing this to also English kids, now that was a serious charge, right? Their parents would press charges against this Amish man? We tried, but since the deed wasn't actually signed yet, I couldn't prove that it was my property, so the sheriff was kind of down again. So What is going on with our system? Uh, right now, I just feel anger how our system is broken. I mean, this guy should have got life in prison. He shouldn't even be seeing the, day, the, the light of day right now. I feel a righteous anger right now. It's ticking me off. This, this is all in the name of God. This is all going on in the name of God. Mm -hmm. While he's using the Bible, he's using God's word to do yeah. absolute nonsense evils, what he's doing. Yeah. And it's sickening. That, that's what makes it bad for me is because he's using God's... Those women would not sleep with that if, they, if he wouldn't use the name God. Right. You know, I know they wouldn't. But he's got them so manipulated and twisted in their minds that they actually like him. They, they sit around him like he's honey because mm -hmm. he's using God's name. He says, I'm God. And, and who doesn't like God? You know? At yeah. the same time, this is also a man who uses the fact that he has children with these women as a threat. So if the women get out of line, he will take their children. Yeah. And he uses threats of violence against the children and the women, against the men, to keep them in line. So men, are, are you telling me these Amish men under his power and control are literally giving their women over to him <coughs> to have children with? Yes, because they're actually saying they want him to sleep with him because of God. Because, because he's using God's name, you they, know? They look at him as God, right? Yeah. He's the prophet. He's, he's the prophet? The, yeah. I'm trying to keep it together here, but I, it just doesn't get much more evil than that. I, I also heard some things that, that if they dug all, throughout his property, they'd probably find bones. Is your, do you think your dad, or do you know of your dad, the Bishop Sam Mullet, of getting rid of or killing or even murdering people? I wouldn't put it past him. Like, he is so evil. Um, the way I know that he kills is with words, like putting you down, putting you down. Like, what he did to me, I almost died. And what he did to me was telling me that I don't know how to take care of my kids. And I don't keep my house clean. And my husband doesn't listen to me. I've been and to your those, house. Your house is spotless. Those <laughs> things, they put a woman down. Yeah. They they put they put you down until you're so your mind starts rolling. What what can I do? What how can I better this? How like my mom? She went to the chicken coop for this, mm -hmm. and, and it kills you. It, it kills you. Your mom thought she deserved to be sent to the chicken coop for hours and hours. Yeah. Days and weeks. Eat and sleep inside the chicken coop. She thought she deserved that. She was in there for two weeks. Two weeks, in prison inside a chicken coop. At a stretch. Eating bread and water, right? Is that what you said? And my dad convinced her that she was so bad that she has to go to hell. And she did this to us that she doesn't have to go to hell. How often did this happen? Uh, Mom was actually twice. That you know of. That I know of. Well, I can tell you when, when someone has money, that's how you start getting power and control over people. Because money is the root of all evil. That can help you be in power and control. I was told yesterday by the sheriff that he is a $4 million man. He has, according to the recorder's office, he has uh, 2,200 acres registered as full owner. He goes to the auctions, the land auctions up on the ridge and that. He's also bought tracts of land off the neighbors. He has one man... Um, who's living on the backside of an English family's farm, and those people are absolutely terrified of him. 
they know that the reason that Raymond is actually living on the backside of their, because they had actually sold it, they thought, to someone else in yeah. the community. And then Sam pulled his family out of there, put Raymond there, and Raymond is there to watch that family. Sam wants their land. And so he has 2,200 acres, and the way he became a millionaire was he sold the mineral rights out from underneath the community. That is how he has paid for his legal defense. That is how he has paid for his protection against the law. Would you say money had something to do with why he got a, maybe a lighter sentence? Yes. Paying off? Definitely. I'm not going to bash law enforcement or the court system. I, did, I know they do a good job for the most part, but he's got hired, I can tell you we got a broken system when money talks. Yeah, he's got hired liars who wear polished wool. Yeah. I could only imagine how many people he's paid off, even in not non Amish. I'm talking yeah. lawyers and government. Yep. Yeah. I'll well, leave that does, one alone. He does pay people off. I've, I've heard him do that. Yeah. yeah. You know what amazes me is how he wants people that are non Amish to fear him. Yeah. That's not going to happen. He wants English people around him to fear him so that we don't do nothing about him and leave him alone so that he can continue to have power and control in his little cult and we uh, need we need to uh, get to the bottom of this we need to rescue all these women and children and even men the men are, 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 the men are, yeah, the men are yeah, yeah. They're, they're believing his lies right yeah. mm -hmm. wow yeah so and now that i know that he has facebook i i know my dad i know him through and through he cannot communicate with anybody, so now he's got Facebook so he can see what's going on in the world. That's By the way, for all of you watching, before we went live, she didn't realize her daddy, Sam Mullet, had Facebook. Hi, he, Sam. <laughs> he was one of the first Amish bishops to trash talk me on my very first testimony videos that I have ever done, almost a year ago now since I've been doing this. And he was bashing me, saying that, the victims that I'm interviewing are lying. You know, you're, you're taking the woman's side and all, because he doesn't, he, he believes women are scum. They're just a piece of meat. You know, There's no such thing as rape. Yeah, he, he doesn't believe rape even exists. So you can see this very man that we're exposing right here, right now, is the very man that was the first Amish bishop to ever even attack me in comments in a video when I'm actually interviewing a victim of sexual abuse and they're sharing their personal testimony. So he's going to know real quick that we're not going to fear this evil hypocrite. So anyway, is there anything else you got to share about your dad? Because I know you got a lot. I've, yeah, I had a lot. I made a note here a little bit. What did you tell me about being ashamed of, of being related to your dad? Ashamed how he treats people. Like, people don't deserve to be treated like that. Uh, they're not bad, you know, it, it's not, it's not bad, you can't do that. And when I found out, it was hard when he separated my family. He took the, as the boys were getting older he, and coming out of school, we finally got help, me and my husband, he took them. He said they weren't living the life they should live. So they had to go live with him and, and do his work. And so I never got that children coming out of school, how it felt to have kids, older kids at home. He took that away from me. He separates a lot of the children. Yeah, and I thought that was bad. But when he started messing with Eli Miller's family, that family was the most beautiful family in the community that there ever was. Him and his wife were coming along good. They had beautiful little children. Everything was fine mm -hmm. until my dad stepped in there and took his wife away. Do you, think, wife. do you think that Sam has actually abused Levina to the point that she's no longer the same person she used to be? Absolutely she is. I was there when they were brainwashing her. Every time Eli would walk in the door, they would tell her that he's just doing that on purpose. Don't listen to him. I was there and I heard it. They were undermining window. his yeah. authority in his own family. Yeah, and the reason my dad likes Lavina, she has a big mouth and she doesn't back down easily, and that's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. That was the wife that he was looking for. And Eli can say whatever he wants. Dad chose her, and there's no way he's going to have her. That's him. He can get whatever he wants. Yeah, and the kids have to pay the price. 
And those children are living in Sam's and house. And those children are living in Sam's house. They don't have no other home. They don't know of any other home. So why why did he chop the little girl's hair off? Tell me about that, how he chopped her hair off. Was that discipline? Yes, those children were uh, very close to Eli because Eli was the one taking care of them. So when he left, got kicked out and left, these kids are going to cry for Eli because they did when I had them, when Eli got arrested. We had to sit, literally sit by them until they fell asleep. So now knowing these kids, they haven't seen their dad and they don't know what happened to him out of nowhere. They're going to cry for him. And my dad is literally cutting their hair off and spanking them for crying for their dad. Like, I, I just, it's too much. I can't. And, and Eli really is a lovely person. He is. There's nothing wrong with Eli. So he they is. miss their dad, Eli Miller. Yes. Okay, so they cry, but they get beaten and their hair cut off for that? Yes. And my dad does not just have a regular paddle. He has one of those old school paddles with holes in it. Oh. Whistler. Yeah. And, and the adults, adults get spanked by that still to this I day. I saw somebody in the comments earlier. It was like a half hour ago or whatever that was. I believe mentioned that, that they heard that he was using a, he said, talk about the paddle or something like that. So he was using a paddle that even spanked adults? Yes. My mom got spanked with that. And a lot of the men got spanked with that, yeah. Folks, I want you all to realize how, what kind of cult this is. This is not even in the, in the category of Amish. I know he uses the Amish name. He dresses up Amish. Everybody in the cult is dressed Amish. But you can't even put... There, most Amish, I'd say probably all Amish, wouldn't be doing what this guy is doing. He is using the Amish religion and name to do very, very evil. So when we were talking about um, punishments a couple months ago... Um, we were talking about the Friday night meetings that go on at his compound. And you were telling me about other punishments that are given that he actually makes spouses do to one another. Like, what do women do with eggs to their husbands? If they, uh, if, if they have to sit in front of my dad and tell what the sins that they did, and if the women think that they're lying, they get a raw egg cracked on their head. Raw egg. raw egg and they're not supposed to wipe it off they have to leave it there what what kind of other things have happened in those meetings um they also use barbecue sauce and rub it on their hands and rub it all over their face um and what's that supposed to do it's supposed to make them not lie oh, wow. make sure that they tell the truth they also did um when it was winter time they tied uh, ropes around their shoulders and drug them through the snow for punishment. Behind the, behind the buggies? Well, just man to man. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But that was considered a punishment. And they did this to my mom. They dragged your mom through the snow. By room. a rope. By a rope? Dragged your mom through? I mean, does it get any more worse? Mm-hmm. When you have power and control like that, that's, uh, well, I, I'll be honest. there's nobody there. They're, like, he's yeah. not dealing with any other churches, and the feds did basically everything they could. There's nobody there. There, well, are, I, there are three neighbors in this valley who are English. And so we have one farm that's 500 acres. We have another farm that's 12 acres. And then we have another one near George's Lake that's 40 acres. Those people all see what's going on. Nothing that he has done is secret. But it is, it, it's not being looked at by the authorities because the authorities believe that the people in the community are volunteering for this. Volunteering, okay. Even though the neighbors are telling them that they're not. They're not volunteering. They're manipulated. Yeah, they've been lied to. They they've believe the lie. They've been lied to, and they, there's nothing else like they're not allowed to go talk to somebody else when i was still there dad tried to manipulate me but it didn't work like my sister martha before she died she told me that she was came down visit my mom and dad when dad didn't know that she was there and he walked into the house one day and he was screaming 
loud voice and his face was red and he, he said know. he no matter what he says or what he does he cannot manipulate linda mm. and it made him so angry and i know you can't so i tried to talk to the women but every time i said something they would run to dad and dad would flip it over can you tell us about the prophecy regarding the church that was supposed to be built um, for the community that would prove that Sam is telling the truth about his relationship with God? Before he went to prison, he would say that there's going to be a new church coming up. And uh, like I said, he's going to be God and everybody's going to have to go through him and this church to clarify it. Repent from all sins like we were doing. Does this church exist? No. Okay. Does Does Sam tell people that in the community and around the community that the other Amish have to come to him for repentance to have salvation? Yes. Does he tell them that he's a prophet? Yes. Does he believe, do you think, that he is actually Moses? Absolutely. They believe he's Moses. Yeah. He believes he's Moses. Well, the, the community does too. Now, but, and now, the reason they believe that is because they're not allowed to read about Moses yeah. mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. They don't know nothing about the Bible because well, he won't let them read it. They don't, they don't know 1 Corinthians 13 either because the first thing that it says about love is that love is kind. And love is kind. to him, kindness is from the devil. So the Bible says love is kind. Jesus was love. But when he says that kindness is from the devil and that's how we know you are against us, when he teaches that, those little kids, even the sheriff, when I talked to the sheriff, he said that even when he comes down to shake their hands, says, hey, little girl, little boy, how you doing? Because he's smiling, he's showing kindness, they will turn around and they will run as fast as they can run because they are taught that kindness is evil. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, yesterday when I talked to the sheriff, he even told me that there has been about 300 Amish bishops that have come from all over the nation yes. to get this guy to repent. Yes. And he rejects every single one of them. They, they actually held a quorum with these bishops who all came together and met in Pennsylvania this last year to figure out what to do with him. The people who are no longer in the community, Sam excommunicated them so that they could not join other Amish communities. The bishops got together and they decided that those excommunications are invalid and they yeah. lifted all of them so that those people could Good. go to other communities Good. that are actually Christ-centered. And of course, as we know, some of them are and some of them aren't. And a lot of the people who left want absolutely nothing to do with the Amish because of the fact that they right. have been so badly abused. Yeah. But those bishops have also decided that there's not even a point to shunning Sam because he's not really Amish. He's not really Amish. He's just a cult leader. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't even really belong to any other Amish. I mean, there's no, no community with anybody else. There's no, I mean, this guy, he just stands out alone. And, he's got his own. And for the record, you know, it's like the, the Carrollton Amish, they know what he's done. Some of them know that he is not Amish. Some of them know that he's not a Christian. Um, the bishop in Carrollton does not want anything to do with him at all. He okay. knows that there's no point in trying to discipline him or to take any of the elders out to talk to him because it won't do any good. Won't do no good. Yeah. And so, you know, basically the only way that these people are going to be saved from this cult is that the English are going to have to step up yeah. and make it happen. I'm, I'm going to work on, as I'm just sitting here, as you guys are talking, there's a lot of things that got put on my mind. Uh, if the law is broken enough to where the, our system can't take care of it by law, uh, I think we're going to have to form a group and take care of it. I think we're going to have to go in and take care of business. I truly believe that. We're going to have we're going to have to evangelize. Yeah, that's the only well, way. I've been well, searching. evangelize after we take this guy down. <laughs> searching for how, um, as I was actually the leader there before I got knocked down for my life change. Mm -hmm. So I truly believe that the reason I can't move is because I can come back and be the leader again because my dad failed. Oh. And God has spoke to me since I was seven years old. I was always different from the family. And that's the message I get. 
and I've been helping. Like you need to bring people to Christianity. I've been helping yeah. that, like mom and dad fought when I was a kid. They never uh, came along well. So I stepped up and took the responsibility for the little ones, which are now them. And I think I should step up and do it again like I did when they were little. Yeah, God can use you. Uh, uh, we need to bring the salvation message to them, the truth, yes. the Bible. I gave you some Bibles. Uh, mm -hmm. If you was to take those Bibles out with Sam and Johnny and all those under him in control, what do you think they're going to do with those Bibles? They're going to burn them. They're going to burn them. So now you see why I say we got to get rid of the bad apples before we evangelize to the rest of them? Well, and this is, and this is one of the reasons why I have said that in distributing the Bibles and the literature that you sent to me, um, they're going to come with gifts. I mean, my plan with these Bibles and with the other literature that you've given me is to blanket the valley. Okay, blanket the valley with it. Blanket the valley. And I and they're going to have to be, like, there's, you know, it's like I watch these kids. I live here. This is my community. Yeah. He can't keep me from wandering around my own community. Yeah. There are fence posts everywhere, and I have a box of thumbtacks that's a mile deep. I can leave stuff all over the Post place. stuff all over throughout the community. And yeah. there's only so many of them that they're going to find. Yeah. My the only thing is, if you do that, and dad finds out, that child is going to get spanked. Well, yeah. and I understand that too, but I also understand that the sooner that they have the phone numbers that they need to call for, I mean, it's like, we've talked about this. Most Amish communities have one phone shack. Mm -hmm. And when you guys, 16 people went to prison, and when you guys went to prison, what happened with the phone shack? Uh, everybody was allowed to have one so we could call back and forth. Right. And it was too unhandy to just have one. So exactly. everybody had a phone. So there are multiple phone shacks mm -hmm. throughout the valley that have landlines. And there are multiple men in this community who have cell phones under the guise of having them for work. So... We know that there are multiple access points at this point for these people to be able to call for help. And all of the literature that Eli has forwarded to me has phone numbers, hotline phone numbers. And anybody who is listening to this message who recognizes my voice, you know you can come to my house and you will be safe there. There you go. I will get you out. We're going to plaster that community with... Uh pamphlets, Bibles, Amish rescue mission, phone number, everything. I mean, I gave you quite a bit of stuff oh, yeah. there. Uh, that's where we start at. But I, I do see we some... We get him put yeah. in prison. Yeah, we can pray over these Bibles. We can pray prayer. I'm, not, I'm never going to talk against prayer. We're going to do that. Uh, but uh, this, this evil monster is going to have to be taken down. And we need to take down yeah. those, the other sexual predators in the community, too. There's um, five of them that I really, really want to lock up so I can get the rest of them. And, and all of, well, okay, so Johnny and Sam are not actually registered sex offenders, but they are sex offenders. And I have no qualms about saying that publicly. Chris is a registered sex offender. He is. Yeah. Who are the other two? The other two are the ones that run the community and give out the punishment orders at the punishment. And that is and Lavina and Wilma, my sister Wilma. I, they both need so to get Levina out of there. So Lavina Miller and Wilma Mullet, Mullet are both part of the problem here. So they are the ones that give out the orders, and sometimes they even go against that. If that doesn't make the punishment hard enough, they do it. So would you say there's at least five leaders in power that should be taken out of the way before yes. you can properly evangelize to get the rest of them? Yes. And that would even be hard because I go back to what Sam was teaching about. Kindness is from the devil, and that's how we know you are against us. So even when you get the most powerful people out of the cult, and now you have the rest of your family and the community. You have to undo the mental damage. You've got to try to undo the mental damage. Yeah, it's going to take time because I know for me... It took time because my mind started going the other way and I started seeing stuff and it scared me. Yeah. But I had to, it, it, it took it slow, but. You I, still I, have I, problems with people being kind to you, don't you? A little bit, yeah. You always think they have an agenda when they're being kind to you? Yeah, they're, they're not kind to me. They, 
they just want something. Like you're not just being kind because you're kind. Yeah, that you've been is, ruined. You're yeah. going to have PTSD probably the rest of your life from that. Probably, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, thank you very much for... Uh, did, did I miss anything? Is there... I think we pretty well covered most of it. All righty. Well, thank you very much for exposing your dad, the bishop, Sam Mullet. And uh, I hope and pray that this uh, awareness is going to take this monster down. I know he loves revenge, but I don't have a fear bone in my body that fears this man. And I say it's time that we come together. If we have a, uh, I'm going to allow the law to do its job. Uh, I'll give them so much time. I'm going to turn this over to them. And uh, if we can't get anything done, I am going to form a group. And I'm willing to put my own life on the line. I'm going to, I'm going to say that. I'm, going to, I'm willing to put my own life on the line to take this monster down. And we're going to really try to do what we can. That. I really appreciate that. I, I've been searching for help for a long time. And I've just been waiting, waiting on my God. Waiting for God to answer. And God always answers. And I think that the way he answered, I actually took my phone number, my home line down, and I knew they knew the number, but I took it down because I was getting a lot of advertisement calls. Okay. And I know they know where I live. So, and also, I thought doing that, if the answer comes from God, I will know it's absolutely from him. Yeah. When Mickey said that two men came to her and told her where I was, I knew instantly that was my prayer answer. Yeah. yeah that was well, how I knew. God is going to answer your prayers. Uh, we're going to continue praying for you and this whole Amish community. Uh, and because there are, God does have a lot of uh, Christians, born again Christians, that, that really do hate evil like I hate evil. And are willing to literally get their hands dirty for the Lord and not just sit back and do nothing. So I think God can use those brave soldiers of Christ to uh, stand up against an evil monster like that. So that's good. Linda, thank you very much. You're welcome. God bless you guys.